Hi, this is Amy, and today I want to talk to you about extensions in Chrome, and specifically my personal favorites and the ones that I use every day. So um, if you want to chime in in the comments with extensions that you know and love, um, I would love to hear from you, and I know that, that everybody else watching this video would too. So first of all, let me remind you how to install extensions. The first thing we're going to do is go into the Apps button. So it's this multicolored button in the top left, and that's going to take us to this page where we see the store link. Now, if by some chance your store is missing or your Apps button's missing in the previous video in this series, I think I show you how to get that back. So from here, this is where we go to install extensions. And let me also remind you that extensions are these little programs that run just to the right of your Omnibox. Um, in Google Chrome, this space is the Omnibox. And it's Omni because that's everything. And we can type in questions there or search terms or web addresses. So the first couple that I want to show you are these URL shorteners. The first one's goo.gl. And this is from Google. And when we install an extension, we want to look down here in the second section or else toggle our extensions button right here, and that will show us only the extensions. Now, you do have to be careful when you're installing extensions. You want to make sure you get the right one from the company you're looking for. They're not hard to get rid of, but still you don't want to be looking for features that aren't going to be there. So check out the ratings on an extension or an app before you install it and make sure that it's got good ratings. I mean, this one I would kind of question it's only got three stars out of 115 that means people aren't liking it that much this one looks great so what you want to do is click the plus free on that and you'll see it install up here in your browser now at first when you install it and you click on this exten extension to use it to shorten a URL see look what it just did it just gave a six character URL essentially to this website instead of it being this crazy long web address nobody can type in but when you first do this it's gonna say not added to history right here and the reason it's gonna say that is because you haven't logged into the extension yet and connected it to your account so if I were you the first thing I would do is click on on the URL shortener and then click where it says not added to history and log in because what that's going to do is allow you to go to goo.gl and log in so let me sign in here so you can see and it's going to show me the list of all of the different URLs I've shortened and what's happened to them since then so some of them you can see they've never been used and this one for example was used 31 times so let's go to the details on it and see um, it was used 31 times on May 31st uh, most everybody was using Chrome 22 of them and everybody was in the United States and here are the the browsers they were using or the platforms so it's pretty cool what you can collect with that so this next one's going to be easy to show you because it's related to goo.gl very similar another URL shortener and this one is called bit.ly so in my Chrome web search I'm going to type in bit.ly and it's the top one that comes up in that search when you look at only extensions and I want you to grab this one too because it adds in a little bit um, another feature to that URL shortener so let's look at what it does differently now when I click the bit.ly fish over here and it, it won't work on this page by the way so let me go to a different page so let's pretend you're at this page and you want to share this video with someone um, and maybe they're in a training with you if you provide staff development or in a session or you want to put it into a presentation to make it look nice and neat well this URL definitely doesn't look nice and neat and even if you go down and get the YouTube URL that's nothing people are going to be able to type in on the spot so um, what you want to do then is use a URL shortener that you can maybe control. We see how Bitly works. It gives me the short URL that it makes, um, just like goo.gl does, but I can also customize it. So now I'm going to call it Smarter Chrome Bookmark. Even though that's a lot of text, adults will be able to type that in because it spells something. So now I can click Save and I can cl click copy bit link and now I can put that into a presentation or a document and people will actually be able to type that in and or it will look a lot better you know 
as a link so that it's not that long kind of ugly thing that's going to maybe split over lines and all that. So that's a much prettier, much nicer looking link and also much easier to type in than maybe some random um, characters would be. All right, so let's move on to the next one. That's two different URL shorteners I use all the time. The next one I want to show you is called Buffer App. So I know that this may not be appealing to everyone, but for people in my field, it probably will be. So this is it, Buffer from buff BufferApp.com. And what Buffer lets you do is share things to multiple channels with just a single click. So let's pretend, you know, we're doing our personal learning for the day and we found a video we want to share out with other people or a website or a blog post or whatever that might be. Well, let's use Buffer to do that sharing. So I'm going to click on Buffer app and I've already logged in through the Buffer app to my Fried Technology Facebook page, Twitter account, LinkedIn, and my Google Plus um, professional page. So now when I click on that, it's going to give a short URL to the video here and now I'm going to replace um, replace this text with you know check out this video or whatever it is that you want to put alright so now I have some choices I can click add to queue um, in which case buffer will post it during my next scheduled posting time so if I'm doing all my professional learning and sharing during one hour of the day, but I don't want to overwhelm everybody who's following me with 10,000 great websites to look at, I can set up a queue and buffer that will spread these out over time. Or if I want to share it now, I can do that right here. Or I can schedule it to go out when I prefer. Um, and it also works great on websites and blogs so for example if there's a blog post you want to share what you do is navigate right to the post that you want to share and buffer will even sort of write the post for you using the information um, in the actual web page so if I click the buffer app now on this um, see how it does this so it's it says getting to know the new drive features for the new school year and it wrote that for me it just took that from the title of the blog post so it makes it really easy to share what you learn so I'm going to show you a couple more today um, the next one is maybe my favorite of all this one is called tab cloud so let's go back to our Chrome web store and find it tab cloud and this is just really fantastic for everybody in education so this is it that's the next one I want you to get and then I want to show you how it works because it's just awesome so when I click on tab cloud what it's gonna do is read every tab that I've got open right now so this one at the very top are my current tabs so let's just say that I'm gonna use this in uh, training you know tomorrow on or, or let's say on 8 1 14 let's say I have a training scheduled for that day and these are the tabs that I need to have open for that day so I'm gonna give that set of tabs a title and click Save and watch them go into my list down here now very boldly for someone using live video here who's unwilling to stop and edit this I'm gonna quit Google Chrome so you can see it stopped and you're just looking at my um, computer there so so now I've opened Google Chrome back up again and instead of letting it open everything I just had open I just opened it fresh which is good to do from time to time so there I go but now let's say it's time for that training to start and I want to open up all these tabs remember how I had all this stuff and a lot of them were pinned some of them were big they were all arranged so now I can just access that tab cloud and it's gonna open up a new window and it's gonna make my browser exactly like it was in that point in time so I've got my pin tabs over here my big tabs and it's gonna bring everything back so I just love that one for educators I think it just just about can't be beat so make sure and, and get tab cloud the next one I want to show you is called last pass so this is it running right up here it's a red um, icon and let's find it in the store it's called last L A S T P A S S and um, I'm gonna pull it up in the web store so we can check out the which one you want to get installed so this is it LastPass free password manager now this is my computer that I use at my office no one else uses this computer and so I leave this logged in all the time but if you're using a shared computer you definitely don't want to leave your Chrome profile 
on that computer. So keep watching this series to make sure that you don't do that because a future one will be about managing your Chrome profile. But I want to show you how LastPass works. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, go to a website um, that I use to pay a bill. So I have um, a Capital One card and when I go to that site I'm going to have to remember the username and the password, right? Well, I'm not going to have to remember it because on this computer right now I'm logged into LastPass. Now you can see what just happened on the screen. Um, it picked up my username and if I want I can now select to autofill my password too. So how I just did that, I just clicked there on the little star to the right of the space and I chose the account that I want to use to fill in to log into this website. So now I can just click log in and I can go right into the website. Um, this works especially well for all of my 1 billion Google accounts that I have. So let's just say um, I want to log into a Google account. Well, LastPass is going to remember all my different Google accounts and give me the ability to log in. I can also go up to my LastPass vault and I can look at all of my different passwords. So if I know that the website I want to log into is Google, I can type that in and it will show me all my different accounts that I have. So this one's amy at engagemeacademy.org. I can go to that and edit it. And if I click this little eyeball right here, I can see what password I typed in last time. And if I want to change it, then I can change it right here. Or I can go to that site and log in again and it'll give me a chance to change the password. So how it gets all these passwords are that it reaps them when you log into a new site. So whenever you go to a new site you haven't logged into since you got LastPass, it's going to plop a, a blue bar up at the top and it's going to give you a chance to save that website. It's really, really nice for people who have trouble remembering passwords, which is just about everybody I know. So at the risk of this video getting really long, you can tell I could go on forever, but um, I'm going to show you just two more and then, um, then I'll split this into another video. So the next one I want to show you is called Snagit. So sometimes you want to go to a web page and you want to capture what's on the web page or maybe you want to do a screencast like the one I'm doing right now. So I'm going to um, navigate to a page at CNN and I'm going to capture this page in time. So you know how sometimes you see something on the web and it may or may not be like that when you get back. So um, let's pull up a page and then we'll take a picture of that page and keep it sort of for posterity. So let me hit pause and what we're going to do now is use this little Snagit um, and we're definitely going to enable it. We're going to use this little Snagit icon and we're going to select a region of this web page and it's going to let me draw a square around what I want to keep. And now when I let go, it's going to bring up a chance for me to name the image. So I'll just call it CNN page. Then if I want, I can do all kinds of things with this image. I can draw an arrow on it if I want. Maybe I want to highlight some text or a word. I can draw a box out. Um, so I can do all kinds of editing on this. And then what's happened is it has shared this through my Google Drive. So now I can go to share and it's going to automatically create a short URL that's on my clipboard. And let's go back over to our document and let's paste it. So here's the short URL now to that image. And I can share that, put it in a document, or I can go to my Google Drive and find that if I want. So it's pretty cool. Um, I'm going to show you just one more today and then I'll, I'll make another video like this later. The last one that I want to show you is called Color Picker. So let's go and get it from the Chrome Web Store so that you can play around with this too. So let's go and find Color Picker. And this also is an extension. So here it is, Color Pick Eyedropper, and it looks like Color Pick is just one word. Now I've tried a couple of different ones of these, but this one is definitely my favorite. So let's say you're working on a, a presentation or a uh, maybe you're making a s'more or working in Canva, and you want something to be exactly the right.
I'm going to enact my color picker and I'm going to hover over the color that I want to pick. So notice there's actually some shading in this icon too. So I'm going to get two different colors. So I want to go to the middle of this and then I'm going to have a color code. So I'm going to actually copy that onto my clipboard with either control C or command C depending on what kind of device you're using. And now I can go over to my um, document. Let me make this text that exact same color that I just copied from there. So I'm going to choose a custom color and I'm going to paste in that code that I took from color picker. So there it is and now that text is exactly the same color as the green in the Google Drive icon and here's the RGB coloring if you need that too. So if you're working on web pages or any kind of graphic design and you're you sort of like things to be exact, um, that's how you can get colors out of all kinds of different things and know exactly what color you're dealing with. So I hope that's as interesting to you as it is to me. I can't believe that anyone else would love this stuff as much as I do, but maybe you do. Um, if you're using another extension that you want me to feature in the next video or that you want to plug, please let us know in the comments. And um, I hope you learned something new and uh, have a great day. Bye-bye.